How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be learning how to make this really cool kind of parasite effect. It's using 100% geometry nodes and it's really fun. Before we get into that, all of my products are 25% off right now, including real-time materials. If you use the code DuckySummer at checkout, you will get 25% off on my shading course, my animation course, and of course, real-time materials. With that being said, let's get into the tutorial. All right. So one thing that's very important for you to be able to follow along with this tutorial is you need to go ahead and Google Blender Daily Builds or builder.blender.org. And right here, you're gonna to wanna to get the 3.3 beta. Um, as of recording this video right now, Blender 3.3 is in beta. Now, if you're watching this several months um, from today's date, it might be in a stable build, so you won't need to go to this. You'll already be at 3.3 or 3.4, 3.5, whatever. But as of today, you'll need to get this, download that zip file, unzip the file, and open up the Blender execute uh, file. Uh, with that being said, once you open it up, just go ahead and clear out your scene. And then um, I'm gonna be using cycles to render this out. So my max bounces here in the light paths, everything is set to one, and reflective and refractive are completely off. And then if you want to follow along in Eevee, which you totally can, um, you go ahead and turn on bloom, ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, and your motion blur, but I'm not sure motion blur really works in this animation. Uh, with that being said, let's go back to cycles or stay in that engine. I am going, going to go ahead and render at 800 samples. All right, so let's go ahead and get in a plane. So shift A, add in a plane. That's the only real amount of geometry we're gonna be goofing with. This is gonna be totally geometry nodes. So click on your geometry nodes tab and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this window. I never use it, um, but let's go ahead and click new and then delete this input. We don't really need that plane. We're gonna go ahead and go ahead, uh, shift A, search volume. And then we're gonna go here and get the volume cube. And that's gonna go ahead and get us this some fog. Looks like you have a cube with a principal volume on it. Let's go ahead and type in volume again and get volume to mesh. Now we have kind of a beveled cube. So if you've never used the volume cube before, it's a fun little tool. You can make this really cool volume cube and um, it's, there's not a lot to it, to be honest. And I have made a video on it in the past, uh, but really the most important thing to know in this tutorial for the volume cube is right up here is your resolution. So if you click and drag, it will up your resolution. So now you just have massive amount of faces. So if we go to the wireframe view, you can see that. If I click and drag and bring it back, this is your subdivision for the cube. So that's really important to note. I'm gonna keep mine at 50 for now, but we're gonna render it at 100 or really whatever your computer can handle. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you can handle more. Now, with that being said, we wanna turn this into a circle and there's, no, there's not a volume circle, there's not a volume torus, there's just a volume cube. So what we need to do is get a gradient node, gradient texture and go to spherical and that is just gonna go ahead and turn it into a circle, which is pretty neat, very simple. Let's go ahead and smooth it out with a set shade smooth node. That's all we're gonna to need to do that. But now we need to take a noise texture and kind of destroy this, but there's no real obvious way to do it because we're already using the input to destroy it. Typically you would just put a noise texture in it and destroy the cube. So this is what we have to do. Let's go ahead and get a mix RGB and we'll plug the gradient texture into the factor and then bring color one all the way to black. And that's gonna give us our circle back. And we use this output right here to um, put textures into it. The texture we're gonna use is a noise texture, but you can use any texture you want. It's a really, really fun to play with. You can even pause the tutorial now, find a texture that you like and uh, goof around with it. Our scale, we're gonna do 1.7 on the scale. Make sure it's 4D and that's so that we can animate it. And then we need to go ahead and get a color ramp. Color ramp goes here and that's gonna allow us to eat into this. And so when we play with that W, now we have the look that we're going for. This used to be a lot more difficult. You'd have to use like vertex groups and weirdness. Um, now with geometry nodes, it's just super easy to do. So this is done, we can loop it, but we'll go ahead and loop the animation later. I wanna go ahead and build kind of a cage around it. Now we're getting to the point where we can just kind of make this really cool looking. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get a join geometry node. This is almost like a mix shader. If you're familiar with nodes, node-based shading, the geometry nodes isn't gonna to be too crazy to understand, especially if you're pretty good at node-based shading. This is essentially a mix shader. Uh, what we need to do is get an icosphere, 
put that over here and plug that straight into the join geometry. You can just put it anywhere. The, uh, the order doesn't matter if it's above or below them, as far as I'm aware. Now let's go ahead and get in a mesh to curve. That's gonna turn this into kind of a wireframe. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bring my radius down a little bit. I like the kind of parasite goo, whatever, to kind of intersect um, the wireframe. So it's kind of caged in, but it's still trying to come out. Gives it a little bit of a story. And now let's go ahead and get to curve to mesh. Curve to mesh, put that there. And to kind of initiate that, we need to get a curve circle. So just type in circle. And then the radius is gonna dictate how big that bar is going to be. So add the curve and then bring that radius down. And now we have a bit of a cage that this is gonna be encapsulated in. Uh, but I also wanna now add some spheres around each point. The point is kind of the corners. So using that word point, we need to get an instance on point. So we'll do a instance on points and we will plug the icosphere into the points selection. So it says use these points and we're gonna plug an object into the instance as what object we are going to instance. So let's plug this into the join geometry and let's get another icosphere. All right here, icosphere and plug that icosphere into the instance. And then we're gonna bring that radius down. So now you can see it's on each point, which is really, really cool. And then bring those subdivisions up a little bit on that icosphere, you know, really whatever you want. Um, and we have it. Now, you can see those faces. Let's go ahead and get that sh uh, set shade smooth node. I'm gonna hit shift D, and put it there. Perfectly smooth. All right, now we have this guy. And personally, I think we should bring this maybe 0 0.02. That looks about right, that looks really good. Maybe 1.5, right in between those two. All right, cool, perfect, perfect, perfect. It looks awesome, it looks interesting, and we now have something really awesome. Now that we have this whole scene set up, let's go ahead and loop the animation of this. So let's go ahead, hover over here, you'll see a plus icon, just drag that up, and then we're gonna go to a timeline. So go to your edit preferences here in the animation tab right here. Make sure your default interpolation is set to linear, that's really important. And I'm gonna give myself 120 frames, that's gonna be about five seconds, but this is gonna be a seamless loop so it can be infinite um, and it won't be obvious. So let's go ahead and take this noise texture and make sure, make sure your W is set to zero. And if you don't have W right here, you need to make sure that your node is 4D. So let's go ahead and just hit Shift D, duplicate that, get a mix RGB, plug that there, plug factor into color two, make sure you're using factor, not color on both of these. So let's go ahead and animate. So right, hover over your timeline, hit the back arrow to go to frame zero. Hover over here and hit I, and then go to the end and just slide that over and then hit I again. That's gonna give it a keyframe. Now if you click on it and you can't see your keyframes, that's normal, I don't know why it does that, but sometimes you just can't see your keyframes. Go back to frame zero. Right here on this W, hit I, go to the very end and type in one. So that's gonna make your W go to a value of one. It's gonna animate a little bit. If you want your animation to be, go quicker, use two, three, four, five, you know, however strong you want it to be. Now that we're at the very end, go to this one, hover over the W, make sure it's at zero, hit I, go to the end, back to frame zero. And since we use positive one on this one, negative one at the very end. Oops, delete keyframes, there we go. Negative one. So now we can see it animates. So we go to the end, it's a perfect loop. And again, I mentioned, if you want it to be faster, don't use a value of one, use like a value of two. And then if you go to the very end, make sure this one is negative two, so they relate. But with that being said, we now have this. And if you wanna know like what would this look like full res, go over here to this node, 100. It looks really cool and very goopy and strange, but we now are done modeling. We're done with the modeling section and animation section. We're pretty much done, but I always like to leave you guys with something you can walk away with, have something you can post, show, whatever. So let's build an environment around it. Very simple one. So I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key. I'm gonna click front, shift A, add a camera, and I'm gonna hit control alt zero. That's gonna snap that camera to view and say it's like 
way out here or way in here, just hit G and middle click and that'll slide it out to where you want it to be. There we go. Look how cool that looks. So let's go ahead and build a scene around this. So I'm gonna be using cycles. You don't have to use cycles, you can use Eevee, just really depends on your preference and your hardware. So here in the world icon, I'm gonna go ahead and bring that all the way down to black. And then I wanna have a light that's really big and behind this so you get a really soft lighting and you also get some silhouette. So I'll go ahead and get a point light and I'm gonna hit G and I'm gonna move it here. So it's behind and it's up. So it really does not need to be an exact science. So we're gonna go now here to the cycles view. I'm gonna give my power at 10,000. And that you might say, oh, that's way too bright. And that's because we're gonna bring this radius really high up. So now it's super soft. Um, now that we're here, let's go ahead and add the volume. So go to the world properties, volume, right here in volume, go to principled volume. Now it's gonna take everything away. Right here in your density, 0.01 on the point light settings. So click on your point light, go to the settings, make it whatever color you want. I love a slight blue. Now we're here. Let's go ahead and add materials to this. Um, in geometry nodes, it's a little bit weirder to make, um, to add materials. You can't just add them the typical traditional way. So go here to this join geometry. Each of these strings represents a piece of this pie in a sense. So this string is the goo this string here would be the wireframe, and this string here would be those spheres on each point. So we need to add a set material node. So set material, and then shift D, plop them on each side. Now we need two materials. We need the goo, <laughs> the glowing goo, and the kind of basic material. So right over here, click this, click new. I'm gonna call it goo. I'm gonna click another one and we're gonna call it base. The reason why we're titling them is over here, you have to be able to see them. So it's more important to tile them. I used to never need to tile them, I mean title them. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and click goo here, base, base. Um, now let's go here to the shading tab and work on texturing these guys, shading them, whatever term you like to use. So we are on slot two, which is the base, keep that in mind. Slot one is the goo, slot two is the base. Uh, so base color, bring that to black and bring your roughness almost all the way down. Now we have this beautiful shiny um, black material. Now let's go here to slot number one, which is goo. We're gonna do the same thing, really low roughness. Bring that specular all the way up so you get really bright reflections. You can even go up to like two, really bright reflections. You can really force it uh, with those values. And then here, we need to go add some emission. So let's get a color ramp. And we want a smooth gradient, so we're gonna go to B spline. And we're gonna get a layer weight. Layer weight and use the facing. And then plug the color into the emission. So now, when we play with this blend, it's gonna go back to the edge. Let's go ahead and bring this color ramp in. So now we get this effect, the white. Go ahead and add whatever color you want. I'm gonna go with green because it's very sci-fi and you guys know I love the sci-fi styles. I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this background. It's just preference. And then bring that up, up that emission strength and you're gonna have something crazy. I'm gonna to go to cycles and tweak this a little bit. Something like this. Bring that emission strength really high. We want to be able to glow really nicely. There we go. We have this looks awesome, looks clean, looks nice. And our light is too bright. It's because of our uh, specular. So we can bring that specular back to one, bring your specular down. It really just depends on how you want that to look. Let's bring that specular back to two and bring our light down. Might be too bright. So let's go 5,000. There we go. That looks really nice. And it'll still be able to glow and we can bring that radius higher, which is exactly what we should have been doing originally so we can capitalize on these reflections, possibly bring that light back a little bit. I'm not sure what good that's gonna do, but I'm gonna hit G and move it back. This is just kind of messing around preference here. Maybe 8,000. Cool, so now we have these reflections. Bring that higher. Now we're just goofing around. What are we doing? Cool. 
all right, it's good enough. And then if we press play, we get these nice reflections. I would tweak it farther. I would edit it farther to make it look cool. But for the sake of the tutorial, this is how it looks. Maybe bring some roughness in. Oh yeah, there we go. Now that looks even better. Just a softer edge, which is something we like. All right, now um, we're done. We're pretty much done with the tutorial. Let me show you guys how to export this and we will be done. So click on the printer icon, go ahead and select your resolution. I love to just keep it at default 1920. If you're a big fan of 4K, just type in 200 on that value and that'll make it 4K. Um, frame, frame rate's fine. Go ahead and make a new file on your desktop or wherever and click this plus icon and I'm gonna call this Goop and then double click it and accept. That's gonna save all your PNGs um, I would highly recommend doing a PNG sequence and then just go ahead and render render animation and you'll be done. Now, if you just want Blender to compile a video for you, you don't have to compile the PNG sequences, especially if you're using Eevee, it probably won't crash. Go from PNG to FFmpeg video. Encoding, go here to MP4 and output quality perceptually lossless, render, render animation, and you'll be done. Uh, but with that being said, that is how you create that animation. I hope you learned some stuff. Again, all of my products are 25% off for the rest of the week. If you wanna check that out, link in the description, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.